Let's install Windows 11 Pro on Hyper-V without a Microsoft account. And normally it requires a Microsoft account in order to install it, but we'll go through some added tricks to make it bypass that and just have a local account. All right, in Hyper-V here, I'm going to click New Virtual Machine. I'll name this Windows 11 Pro, and then I like to put the date so that I know when I made this machine. I don't want it in a different location. I'll leave it in eVirtual Machines Masters Hyper-V. I'll make this a Generation 2 machine, and I'll give it 4 gigs of memory. If your machine doesn't have a lot of memory, you may want to make that less. I would recommend not less than 2 gigs, though. Now, this is very important. Normally, we would choose default switch, but I do not want this machine to be connected to the Internet. And it's important that it not be connected to the Internet, because if it was, then it would require that Microsoft uh, account. So we want not connected. All right, everything looks good here. I'm going to install it from an ISO file. And next, and finish. All right, it's almost ready to go, but not quite. Windows 11 has some requirements that I will have to make some changes to Hyper-V in order to, um, to meet those requirements. So I'm going to right click on there and go to settings. I'm going to go down to security and enable trusted platform module. Now I'm going to go down to processor and I'm going to give it, it has to have at least two processors. Otherwise, I'm going to give it four by the way, otherwise it will fail um, at the at the startup so let's click OK and now I'll right click and connect to this device and we will start it now when I start it I'm going to click start and then I'm going to click inside this black area and click the uh, any key I'll use the space key uh, somewhat repeatedly because I don't want it to miss getting focus in here and then getting the keystroke in order to boot to a DVD, which in this case is really just an ISO file. So I'm clicking in here and clicking that um, space bar as well. See, there's where it asked for it, right there. And I believe I got it in time. If I didn't get it in time, then this uh, I would not get this screen. So, all right, let's click Next and Install. And by the way, throughout this video, during times that we're waiting for something to happen, I will either pause the video uh, or cut the long waits or speed it up so that you don't have to wait a long time for things. I do not have a product key for this one. This is just going to be a, a demo installation. And it's going to be a Windows 11 Pro. They're all 64-bit. Uh, Windows 11 does not have a 32-bit. I will accept the license agreement. And I do not want this to be an upgrade. It's a brand new install. So I'll click custom. There's only one drive. It's the virtual drive that Hyper-V just created. And there it goes. And this is where we will pause so that uh, you don't have to sit through the whole thing. All right. It's getting ready to reboot itself. So let's keep an eye on it and see what it does. And there we go. Rebooting. Okay, it looks like we're coming up on our first time setup screen now. Also called the OOBE, or Out of Box Experience. So let's step through this thing. And we will have to stop and do some tricks here in just a little bit. So first, is this the right country, United States? Well, yes it is, for me anyway. And the US keyboard is correct for me. Do I want to add a second keyboard? No. 
I'll skip that. All right, now it's looking for an internet connection and it says it can't find one. Ethernet not connected, which of course I did on purpose. So now the trick, now the fun part. I'm going to uh, click the Shift F10. And here, when I get the command line, I'm going to type OOBE. That again, that stands for out of box. Well, I have to click inside here first. OOBE, out of box experience, backslash, and then bypass NRO. All one word, bypass NRO. Enter. Okay, we had a little reboot there. All right, we're going back into the OOBE. So let's see what it asks. Yep, beginning the OOBE all over again. Is this the right country? Yes, it is. Is this the right keyboard? Yes, it is. Do I want to add a second keyboard? No, I'll skip that. Now, this is where it asks for the internet connection, but this time we have something new. This time we have, I don't have internet on here. We didn't have this option before. So, now it wants me to either get connected or continue with limited setup. And that's what I want to do, continue with limited setup. Now I can put my name in there, my password. Verify my password. Now it wants some security questions. And since this is just a virtual machine that I'm not going to have in production environments, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off all of these telemetric these te telemetry settings. I don't want anything going back to Microsoft. I'll accept that and now it's setting up my account creating my user profile folders and Hyper-V wants to know what size to make this I'll make this bigger and there comes my screen by the way at this point I can turn my internet connection back on so I'm going down to file settings and then network adapter and I will connect it to the default switch, which is what we normally do uh, the first time around. And now I can go ahead and log in. And it's populating my settings. Uh, while we are here, let's go ahead and into the settings and check our account. And look at that. There I am as a local account. By the way, at this point, of course, this is not activated. If I go up to the command line here, well, actually, PowerShell. SLMGR space slash DLI. Um, license manager and then display license information and it says notification so that means that this is a trial copy and it's not activated but of course you're on your own to activate this I'm not going to show you how to bypass that alright there it is thanks